Good evening, everyone. Would you please join us in a salute to the flag? Uh, and then we're going to ask for a moment of silence for Carolyn English. She's a charter member, or was a charter member of the Maplewood Community Pool and Maplewood Seniors Club. Uh, she recently passed away. Also, Peter Robolata, who's a community volunteer, who also passed away. And we want to um, uh, say uh, some words of silence, uh, or a moment of silence, for the 17 young people who died uh, in Florida in that shooting. So first, the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Pursuant to Section 5, Chapter 231, Public Laws 1975, this is the state for the record that adequate notice of this meeting has been provided to the public by posting and maintaining the annual notice of regular meetings on the bulletin board of the municipal building, by mailing the annual notice of regular meetings for 2018 to the news record and Star Ledger in December 2017, and by filing said notice in the office of the township clerk. Ms. Adams? Here. Mr. Daffis? Here. Mr. Lembrick? Here. Good night, CC. Mr. McGeehee? Mayor DeLuca? Here. Whereas Chapter 231, Public Laws 1975, commonly known as the Open Public Meetings Act, of course, all means that public bodies be open to the public. Whereas Section 7 provides that the governing body has the discretion to permit, prohibit, or regulate the act of participation of the public in any meeting. And whereas the czar and the governing body to comply with the provision of this act, same time to conduct this business in an orderly and expeditious manner. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Township Committee. Township of Maplewood does hereby prohibit, except to set forth in the formal agenda, active participation in the deliberations of the governing body by the public, except as otherwise described by law, does limit the public to the observations of the actions and discussions of the governing body at all of its regular and special meetings. So moved. Second. Ms. Adams. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the February 20th, 2018 meeting of the Maplewood Township Committee. Sorry for the delay. We had a few uh, uh, personnel items we had to deal with. Uh, I'm going to go through the introduction quickly. Uh, first up, we have a Lions Club uh, donation to the Maplewood Fire Department. Um, then we'll have our public comment, first public comment session. After that, we have an ordinance on final passage, and that is uh, creating a ex officio non-voting member uh, on the Maplewood Seniors Advisory Committee from the library. We have another, another ordinance on final passage, and that's creating the police chaplains. A third ordinance on final passage, and that's uh, requiring registration of vacant residential properties. We have an introduction of a new ordinance, which deals with fees for the municipal pool. Another new ordinance we'll be introducing, and this is permitting installation of solar energy systems within all of our zones. Um, uh, another new ordinance is uh, amending 123 of the code, chapter 123, and that has to deal with fees for solar energy. 
and then the last ordinance we're introducing uh, has to do with uh, uh, dealing with solar collectors as an accessory use. We have four discussion items. First is an update on the fire department consolidation. We have an update on the affordable housing settlement and the work that's going to be going forward. We'll be discussing the capital open space and personnel requests for the 2018 budget. And then uh, we'll also be reporting from the code committee on updated fire prevention permit and inspection fees. Our consent agenda consists of 20, I'm sorry, 19 items. Nope, I'm sorry, 11 items. Uh, we have a resolution we're going to be awarding our 2018 recycling contract. We're going to be renewing a plenary retail license for Highland Place Associates, and three of those resolutions deal with that. We'll be closing out our roadway improvement program, applying for a municipal alliance grant, uh, applying for a sustainable Jersey grant. We'll be approving bills and claims. Uh, and we're approving the completion by elite properties uh, at Maplewood LLC. And we'll also finally approve the open and close session minutes of February 6th. We'll have our second public comment period, administrative reports, reports from elected officials. We will adjourn as the township committee and reconvene as the local ABC, and that's to hear the uh, liquor license application for Highland Place, soon to be opened as Alto Piano. So with that, I'm going to ask the Lions Club uh, representatives to come up here to the microphone. And I'm not sure of the fire department who's representing. I see some are stirring about. Mayor DeLuca, members of the Township Committee, on behalf of the Maplewood Lions Club, uh, we're pleased to uh, present tonight um, the first just briefly, for 92 years, the, the men and women of the Maplewood Lions Club have uh, cooperatively volunteered to serve the needs of others in this community and worldwide. Through their fundraising activities, the Lions ha have been uh, generously uh, donated such things as the, the Maplewood First Aid Squad's uh, vehicle, supplying defibrillators for each of the schools in Maplewood and South Orange providing eye exams and eyewear to needy students, furnishing the fire department uh, with its first thermal imaging unit, uh, funding local scholarships, and assisting victims of natural disasters such as Sandy and Katrina. And we run events in town that not only help support the community and raise money, but also build community spirit. And those over the years have included such things as fashion shows, casino nights, Great Chefs Night, Raffles, and most recently the Maplewood Emotion 5K Run, which is held the first weekend after Columbus Day. Uh, the Maplewood Alliance is part of an international organization. It's the largest service organization in the world. Uh, it's non-political, it's non-sectarian. Uh, its organizations are all open to men and women. And we have a very simple model, which is we serve. And we, when we meet, we open with a toast that demonstrates our commitment to egalitarianism and mutual respect. It goes like this. It says, not above you, not beneath you, but with you. Um, it gives us great pride to see that our fundraising efforts have allowed us the, uh, the ability to provide our firefighters with equipment which will protect them and help save lives. Good evening. Uh, first, uh, Chris Ariano, President of FMA Local 25. Just want to uh, thank the Lions Club uh, for their generous donation to us. Uh, each firefighter uh, did receive one of the new hoods. Uh, the purpose of, of this hood is to decrease the risk of cancer. Um, fires today are not the fires that they used to be 20, 30, 40 years ago. They burn hotter, they burn dirtier, uh, they burn nastier, quite frankly. So what this hood will do is it will reduce the number of particles that enter our bodies during a fire and basically just keep us healthier. So it's, uh, it's a little heavier, uh, but for the most part, it'll improve our health. Um, cancer is becoming uh, the number one killer of firefighters. 
Uh, it used to be strokes, heart attacks, but uh, cancer is quickly affecting all of us. So, so again, thank you to the Lions Club. We appreciate it. Thank you. check <laughs> so uh, could you, can someone come back up to the mic and speak about the check and how much it is and how many uh, pieces of equipment you'll be able to purchase yeah. right, right up, to, up to the microphone speak loudly enough the check is for five thousand three hundred seventy five dollars uh, which um, uh, acquires of which the fire department can acquire 42 or 43 43 of these hoods so there are enough hoods for everybody to use because it's very important that uh, we we give our fire fighters the best protection they can get at this time right. hopefully maybe in the future we have even better masks or uh, hoods but this will do for the time being great well thank you very much for all you do for our town and for doing this for the fire department. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're now going to open up the public comment session. Is there anyone who would like to address the township committee? Just ask for your name and your address. Uh, Art Christensen, uh, 304 Elmwood Avenue, Mayport. Vic, uh, this, this is for agenda items, and I didn't see the matter. I want to discuss the Florida situation, and I didn't see it on the agenda. I'm happy to wait until the... No, you can speak now. Speak now. Okay. In light of the recent tragedy in Parkland, Florida, Where 17 lives were lost by a 19 year old former student with an assault rifle. I have a few yes or no questions. I'm hoping you'll be able to answer. One, has there been a special closed session, if you will, meeting of the township committee to discuss whether any changes are necessary to enhance security throughout the school system in South Orange and Maplewood? Uh, there has not been a special meeting of the Township Committee, but the police chief has had meetings with the uh, director of security for the district, Tom Shea, who's a new uh, position there. And um, I've also been in communication with the school board president, Elizabeth Baker. OK, thank you. Uh, actually, that the second question was, again, a yes or no. That, has there been any meeting with members of our police, fire, or first responders, responders to discuss the readiness to deal with a similar problem in our schools like recently held in Parkland? Yes. Third is, has there been a meeting with the school superintendent? I think it's just, I don't know if you answer that, principals, or Board of Education as to their concerns should they find themselves in a similar, with a similar problem? Um, the school board and the superintendent have been meeting with at various um, school building levels and also looking at district-wide protocols, yes. Okay, the reason I'm asking this is primarily my concern for coordination because obviously there's been a complete disconnect between school, uh, police, even the FBI, with regards to making sure that our children and our schools are safe. Uh, and finally, has there been a follow-up on this incident that I read online regarding a very frightening uh, graffiti that says if the if the, the bully 
doesn't stop from getting a gun, something to that effect. Um, there was a response, and the response to the school board or whoever from the police was that there doesn't seem to be any imminent danger. But I'm wondering to what degree there's a follow-up, because clearly to me and to many others I've spoken to, it is a red flag. So the police are investigating that, and uh, we're not at liberty to make anything public. Thank you very much. I'm sure you guys will be on top of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Jeanette Page Hawkins, Essex County Representative. I would like to uh, extend an invitation to all of the Township Committee to attend uh, the County Exec's uh, 2018 State of the County Address. That's going to be next Monday, uh, February 26 at 7 p.m. at Essex County Hospital Center in Cedar Grove. Uh, you can RSVP, <coughs> and I'll give you the number, and that's 973-621-4400. Again, 973-621-4400. And while I'm here, is there anything that I can do for the Township Committee? Any issues? Concerns? Yes, thank you. Um, we have been in contact with the engineer and also the public works uh, director about a, a multi-town project we're doing on Irvington Avenue. And I know the last time I spoke to the engineer was probably uh, three weeks ago. They were running into some difficulties in getting permission from some of the private property owners on right-of-way issues. So. We are, we're really anxious to move that Irvington Avenue project forward. And if we can be of any assistance in talking to residents and helping get that log jam cleared, let us know. But we really want to impress upon the county, the engineer, the county executive, that this is a very important project for us. And if we could uh, get that done. Okay. I will take that message. Thank you. Anything else? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else want to address the Township Committee? Okay. We're going to close the first public comment. There'll be a second one later. Uh, we're going to move to ordinances. We have an ordinance on final. This is Mayor item number seven, ordinance on final passage 2888-18. It's an ordinance to amend chapter 59 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood, entitled Seniors Advisory Committee. This ordinance will add the Maplewood Memorial Library Director or designee as an ex officio non-voting member of the Maplewood Seniors Advisory Committee. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board of the municipal building and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this ordinance which makes changes to the Senior Advisory Committee? Seeing no one, can we get a motion, Mr. Daffis? Sure, Mayor. I move this ordinance be adopted as a whole and the clerk be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange News record according to law. Second. Any discussion? Who's called the roll? Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. Another ordinance on final? This is Mayor Item 8, Ordinance 2890-18. It's an ordinance establishing the position of police chaplains within the Maplewood Police Department. This ordinance will establish the position of police chaplains within the Maplewood Police Department. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Is there anyone who wants to speak on this ordinance which establishes police cap chaplains? Seeing no one, Mr. Lemberg, can we get a motion? I move this ordinance be adopted as a whole and the clerk be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange News Record according to law. No, I'll second that. Any discussion? Uh, we're going to be doing this if we approve this, which I think we will. We're going to be making these appointments at the next meeting, correct? That's my understanding, March 6th. Uh, please call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lemberg? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. 
Uh, another ordinance on final. It's Mayor item nine, ordinance 2891-18. It's an ordinance to require the registration of vacant residential properties within the township of Maplewood. This ordinance will require any vacant residential properties within the township of Maplewood to be registered with the Maplewood Building Department. This ordinance has been published, copies posted on the bulletin board of the municipal building, and copies made available to the general public in accordance with the law. Is there anyone who wants to speak on this ordinance dealing with vacant residential properties and having them registered with the township? Seeing no one, uh, can we get a motion, Mr. Daffis? I move this ordinance be adopted as a whole and the clerk be directed to publish the same as a past ordinance in the Maplewood South Orange News record according to law. Second. Any discussion? Let's call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Davis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes, thank you. We have an introduction of a new ordinance, number 10. Item 10, Mayor, Ordinance 2892-18 is an ordinance to amend Chapter 123 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Fees Regarding the Municipal Pool. This ordinance will revise pool rates beginning in 2018 and will add non-resident membership. Mr. Lambert, we we'll make a motion. Oh, yes, I move this ordinance. I'm sorry, I move the passage of this ordinance on first reading. It's publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on March 6, 2018. Second. Any discussion? Who's called the roll? Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Thank you. We have another introduction of an ordinance. Item 11, Ordinance 2893-18. It's an ordinance to amend Chapter 271 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood, entitled Zoning and Development. This ordinance will permit the installation of a solar energy system within all zones within the Township of Maplewood. Uh, Ms. Adams, can we get a motion? I move the passage of this ordinance on first reading. It's publication according to law in the Maplewood South Orange News Record and a hearing to be held on March 6th. Second, Mr. Desiderio? March 20th. March 20th. Oh, 20th? Yes. Oh, right, Chicago Planning Board. Yeah, it's, it's listed wrong here on the uh, agenda. It should be 20th. <coughs> so you just want to make that statement that this will be this will be referred to the Planning Board? Yeah, yeah this, this, this ordinance and the next ordinance, because they are zoning ordinances, have to go to the Planning Board who have to make a review concerning the master uh, whether consistent with the master plan and then refer it back to the governing body so well, this the, this ordinance and then 295 the next one yeah yeah well 294 is the fee so it's one after that okay the fees don't have to go there okay so it's been moved and seconded please call the roll Ms. Adams yes Mr. Daffis yes Mr. Lembrick yes Mayor yes thank you we have another introduction of an ordinance item 12 introduction of a new ordinance 2894-18 it's an ordinance to amend Chapter 123 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Fees. This ordinance amends Chapter 123 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood dealing with fees for solar collectors. There, I move the passage of this ordinance on its first reading publication according to law in Maplewood South Orange News Record and hearing to be held on March 6th. No, 20th. 20th. <laughs> okay. Because it has to go with the other. It, right, I get it. I just thought I'd ask. Yep. Yeah. I'll second that. Please call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lindbrick? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Thank you. And the final one on introduction. Item 13, Ordinance 2895-18. It's an ordinance to amend Chapter 271 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood entitled Zoning and Development. This ordinance amends Chapter 271-35 of the Code of the Township of Maplewood dealing with solar collectors as an accessory structure i move the passage of this ordinance on first reading its publication according to law maplewood south orange news record and a hearing to be held on march 20th i second Ms. call the roll Ms. adams yes mr daffis yes mr. limbrick yes mayor deluca yes thank you and we're now up to our discussion items the first is an update on fire department consolidation so this is uh just a brief uh update we um have had discussion with south orange uh leadership and we've uh, arrived at a framework for a consolidated fire department between maplewood and south orange 
Um, some of the particulars, there's a lot more to work on, but I just wanted to give you some of the particulars. <coughs> Maplewood will be the lead agency. So the, uh, all the firefighters will be employees of the township of Maplewood. There will be um, four shifts, minimum shifts of 14 on duty, which is uh, the minimum now. Uh, 17 on duty fire personnel. Um, there'll be, we have three firehouses. There will continue to be three firehouses. There will, is uh, five pieces of apparatus, five engines and trucks. There still will be five engines and trucks in those three firehouses. Um, we will be absorbing uh, firefighters from South Orange into a newly named Maplewood and South Orange Fire Department. That is the framework. Uh, we have a lot more to do. We have a lot more people to speak to, um, but we just wanted to update you because that is, uh, that's where we are. So I don't know if anyone has any questions. If not, we'll move on. The next up is the affordable housing. Uh, this is part of our arrangement with uh, the court. Uh, we've settled the lawsuit with fair share housing. Our consultants have prepared the housing element and fair share plan, which was sent out. Uh, it's, it's actually a pretty interesting read. There's a lot of statistics here uh, about the demographics of the community. And, um, and essentially what we're talking about is uh, a go forward plan which will require new units uh, as units are put online on uh, uh, rental units they will have to be 15 percent affordable uh, as for sale units come online they'll have to be 20 percent affordable and these are for five or five units or up anything under five units like a four unit small apartment or a three family house or a two family house is not covered by this uh, they have another requirement of making a contribution, a cash contribution. Um, they'll also have to, any new developers will have to follow the mix of uh, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and three bedrooms for families. And just to give you, uh, for example, uh, beginning in March, the Avalon Bay monthly rents for a one bedroom moderate income uh, unit is $870 for a low one bedroom unit it's $693 a month uh, for a one bedroom one, a, a three bedroom low it's $970 a month so it's a, a very reasonable rent it will allow us to uh, meet our obligation of affordable housing what we would like to do this housing element must go to the planning board uh, it will, planning board will hold a hearing and will uh, make a recommendation to the township committee to adopt or amend the uh, housing element that you see here. Um, and that we will take that up at our next meeting in, uh, I'm sorry, at the March 30, 20th meeting. So we would need a motion today to refer this to the planning board, correct? I think there's motions on here, Mayor. Uh, on the agenda? I don't believe I saw that. I don't think I read that. I don't think I saw that either. No. There's no resolution, so we would need a motion to refer it. Just bear with, just bear with me one second. Mr. Mayor, I do have a few questions on this. Sure. I'm, uh, you can ask him now. Okay. Uh, the first is that the report that we received that you referenced, you know, I, I did have a chance to skim that uh, today, and, and it is an interesting read. Is that something that can be made public? Yes. Okay. Yes, it will be made. It actually has to be made public. Uh, there, there'll be a, we'll, we'll put it online, but there'll be hard copies here uh, at the clerk's office and at the planning board's office. Okay, so Mr. Manning and Ms. Averos can put that on the website. Yep. Perfect. Um, I had a question uh, about uh parking uh and our current requirement uh is that we have correct me if i'm wrong, we have one parking spot 
per bedroom is the requirement. Is that that's not correct? No. Not or is it one per unit? No, it's two bedrooms. All residential uh, in Maplewood is two bedrooms per unit. No, but how many parking parking spots? Ooh, I'm sorry, two parking, two parking spaces. <laughs> yeah, where you sleep your car, you put your your car to sleep. Okay. Uh, two parking spaces okay. per <laughs> unit. So so two parking spaces per, per <laughs> unit, regardless of whether it's a one bedroom, two bedroom, or three bedroom. That's correct. Okay, uh, and will so this will that also be true for the the affordable units will be treated the same way. Correct. Two two parking spaces per unit. Yes. Okay, um, and. No, just I'm just just so you. We rarely hold to, to park. We really rarely hold to that standard of two per uh, apartment. We generally go 1.2, 1.5, yeah. yeah, somewhere between 1.2 and 1.5. Okay, uh, but the, there's there's no difference between a one bedroom or a three bedroom as far as correct. Okay. Um, and my last question, uh, and this is something that, that you and I spoke briefly about the other day, but I wanted to uh, just get a clarification uh, because I, it's something that I have been asked about, is uh, does this settlement that we've done impact the ability for developers to, uh, if they're putting up an apartment building, to put the uh, affordable units on site versus off site, or is that something that is still within the discretion of the township committee to permit or deny? It will still be the discretion of the township committee to permit or deny. Okay, so the case by case doesn't change that one way or the other. Correct. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have one question. Yes. Uh, with respect to the um, the unmet category. Unmet. Unmet separate categories in the unmet category is about 320 or so units uh how does the maplewood country club and court and golf course play into that if at all i saw it mentioned there it sort of implies it's included but it's not included i mean obviously it's on a flood zone and so therefore we're not talking about developing it anytime soon anyway but can you explain a little bit about so that? the the maplewood country club property from the very beginning has always had an overlay zone requiring uh right now it's zoned for one apartment i'm, I'm sorry one housing unit per seven thousand square feet we've always had a uh eight per uh Acre. acre before uh, and it remains at eight per acre uh, the whole night the whole 89 acres are included but we know that a good portion of those 89 acres are in um, flood areas uh, so this still would be required somewhere in the vicinity of 700 units over those 89 acres uh, eight per 89 um, and then there would be 15% of those. That's how we would meet the unmet need. In addition to incrementally, as other projects are getting built, you would have three units here, seven units here, nine units there. So the important thing right now is that we do not have a current obligation to build new units. And we have had our current obligation for rehab units to go from 91 to five now. So we're in very good shape. We have an unmet need going forward, and we're addressing that through the overlay zone at the golf course and through the other ordinances requiring, um, what I said before, is for every, uh, all the apartments that get built, 15% have to be uh, affordable. If I may, Mayor. Yes. There are, Mr. Daffis, there's a series of ordinances that are going to go with this plan to the planning board. Uh, they have not been attached to it. I will circulate them to you with the with the final plan when it goes to the planning board, so you have the whole package. One of them is the ordinance for the overlay zone, which lays out all the numbers, the percentages, etc. So I think that will better answer your question. Great, thank you. Okay. Yeah, we won't be dealing with those ordinances until the court approves the housing element. Yeah, we, we must. They'll be looking at if there's any changes to the ordinance that will give it to us before. Uh, we adopt those ordinances. Yeah, the, the, the sequence of events, as I understand it, is the planning board will make its recommendation back to the township committee. On the 20th, the township committee will, con will, will consider three ordinances. 
one, to accept the plan, two, to request that this court approve the settlement. The court will then, I believe we have a April date. Yes, April, April solely April so date it. for the court, which will court, court will hold a fairness hearing, assume the court accepts the uh, the plan as, uh, as drawn up and the proposed ordinances. Then the ordinances will come on before you sometime in April or May for final, at which point then it should be done. Right, thank you. That should be the process. Okay, so can we get a motion to refer this to the planning board? So moved. Second. Let's call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Ms. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lindbergh? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. And Ms. Desdale, you'll take care of uh, getting it referred there. Yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, there was an email from uh, Ms. Lewis today that she's actually advertised the hearing, et cetera. So we'll, we'll get it all over there. Great. Thank you very much. Um, Let's, uh, if you don't mind, let's skip the budget items. Let's deal with item number four, updated fire prevention permit and inspection fees. Mr. Daffis? Sure, Mayor. Thank you. Um, so our fire chief, Chief Dinglestad, uh, at a code enforcement meeting last week, brought to our attention updated fire prevention permit inspection fees. Um, traditionally, we have uh, we have definitely charged below what the state has uh, suggested or prescribed uh, in comparison to surrounding towns. We've also been uh, on the low end. And so this is an effort to uh, come up to par, be a little bit more competitive, and uh, fall in line with the new uh, state mandated permit fees and inspection fees. Uh, it's important to note here as well that um, our fire department does an incredible job in Maplewood in terms of fire inspections, in general, in terms of all fire safety, but with fire inspections in particular, we have at least a three-person level process um, to make sure that everything is uh, up to code before uh, a new resident receives a certificate of occupancy. Um, we're very thorough, we do an excellent job, and many times we're asked to do that at moment's notice, hours before the closing. Uh, the new fees are uh, need to be communicated to our realtors, and some education needs to be done to uh, kind of put them on notice not to do that, to not uh, wait until the very last minute. And so, um, I think you've all seen the fees, right? They've been circulated. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Lindbergh has seen them. I, I don't think I have, but. Any questions? I mean, I could read them if you like. Yeah, well, no. Why don't you just read them just for the. Right, right, right. So for fire prevention permit fees, uh, type one permit is going um, from $42 to $55. Type two from 166 to 215. Type three from 331 to 430. Type four from 497 to 645. And type five remains the same. For smoke detector, carbon monoxide alarm inspection fee, $100 if booked at least 10 days prior to inspection date. Uh, 10 days. 125 if booked four to 10 days prior to inspection date, and 175 if booked less than four days prior to the inspection date. Uh, we're contemplating a recheck inspection fee of $50. Those are the new fees. And uh, for the first time, we're contemplating um, putting these into an ordinance. These are not fees that are going to change anytime soon, as we understand. And um, our yeah. enforcement committee recommended that. So they're now they're now in ordinance form under Chapter 127 Fire Prevention. So we want to Chapter 123, Subsection 127. Yes, we want to uh, um, introduce this at the next meeting. That's the recommendation. Okay. You, you have those numbers, the new yeah, numbers. I just wanted to add one of the issues here was the increase in um, the shorter the notice the higher the fee because the fire inspector and the fire department get last minute calls and 
closing tomorrow. We need the inspection. And we're closing this afternoon. Right. And yeah. uh, <coughs> that's not the way it should be run. And, um, you know, it's just pretty common practice before closing. You need these inspections, and that's well known. So we want to distance it. We want to incentivize folks to to uh, schedule their to plan ahead exactly. But it's it's uh, bad for our, our fire department uh, employees to to have to run out on the spur of the minute. So now it'll cost a little more. Right. Okay. Can I uh, suggest that we do the consent agenda, the next public comment period? then the local ABC hearing, and then come back and do the budget items, capital, open space, and personnel requests? I'm fine with that. My my question, Mr. Mayor, is if there is anyone in the public who wants to address what we discuss in the budget, would they be able to do that at that yes. time? Yes, yes. Okay, I just, yes. I just don't want to cut off yep. public comment. Okay, so we can get a motion on the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move adoption of Resolution 44-1A through items 52-1A and approval of the open and closed session minutes on the consent agenda. Second. Who's called the roll? Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lembrick? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Okay, we're gonna have our second public comment. Is there anyone who wants to address the Township Committee? Um, <clears throat> and Mr. Desiderio, we can just adjourn right now and uh, go into the ABC and then come back in to... The answer, the answer is yes. Yes. Before you do, because I don't want to lose track of it, uh, you passed a resolution tonight awarding contract for 2018 recycling collection. Yes. I, I am concerned about that, and I sent a memo to you, the yes. fact that we put this out for bid twice. The first time we got zero bidders, we thought it was because of the day and we changed the day of the week for collections from Monday to any other day. And we got one bidder who was Basso, who we were not overly enthusiastic about this year. There are present collectors. I believe we only got one bidder last year who I think was Basso. I don't know what can be done about this. I don't know if there's a committee, the recycling committee or someone, but it seems to me that there should be some outreach to other towns and to other companies to find out why we can't get more than one competitive <coughs> bid for this. And by the way, of course, the bid was higher than it was last year. Right. So I'm just I'm just bringing it to your attention. So the uh, this would be under the Engineering, Public Works, and Planning Committee. Um, and we can certainly talk to Mr. Bell. You know, this is set now for 2018. Yeah, I mean, I think... I, mean, I think it's set now, so we can, like... Yeah, we, maybe, we, have, we have a year. Yeah, we, he, can come, he can provide us with a report. I think that would be better than just talking won't talk tomorrow about it then. Okay. Find out what he can okay. give us. So the answer Maybe Mr. Mayor, you could ask him for uh, his analysis of why we're only getting one. If okay. Can, if he can provide that in writing, it would be sure. useful. Okay. Uh, we need a motion to... Um, that was really loud. To adjourn the Township Committee. Uh, well, we just suspend it. Suspend the Township Committee and begin the meeting of the local ABC. So moved. Second. Who's going to roll? Mr. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Lemberg? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Okay. Uh, we have a matter of reinstatement of the plenary retail consumption license. And who's going to handle this, Mr. Dick? Uh, up to Mrs. Fritz. I'm going to sort it up. All right. Okay, so uh, we're going to convene a uh, meeting right now of the Maplewood Local ABC. I'm going to take a roll call first. Ms. Adams? Yes. Here. Mr. Right. Daffis? Here. Mr. Lembrick? Here. Mr. McGeehee? Mayor DeLuca? Here. This is uh, in the matter of consideration of reinstatement of plenary retail consumption license number 0711-33-007-006. That license is 5 Highland Place Associates, LLC. And uh, you will remember that you had uh, not approved renewal of that license back uh, approximately June 21st. June 21st. 2016. Yeah, 2016. So uh, when you pass a consent agenda earlier in the meeting, 
There were three uh, resolutions on that consent agenda that bring you in line for discussion tonight with uh, Five Highland Place, who is here, uh, Mr. Keehan and his attorney, Mr. Montero. And now I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Desiderio. Okay, so what, what effectively has happened is uh, our conversations with state and ABC have suggested that there needs to be a reason, a, a, that they're asking for a, if it, if it is your choice, for you to rescind is the word that they want in the resolution, your decision of June the 21st, 2016, with regard to this license. Now at that time you expressed dissatisfaction with the current state of the license, the licensee and the premises. Uh, and as a result of that, when the license came on for renewal for that period of time, uh, which I believe was the 1617 uh, license period, you did not renew it at that time. So really now it becomes a question of whether or not the governing body as the ABC is willing to entertain a resolution to rescind its prior decision, which effectively reinstates the license. The, li the, the three resolutions that Ms. Fritzen has referred to, which are on the consent agenda, and I think we should go through those, assuming that you do agree to reinstate it, really are, are bookkeeping resolutions to reinstate it for the years where it was not active for whatever reasons. So I think the, the, the threshold issue is whether or not you're interested or willing to entertain the reinstatement or rescission of your prior decision. And the uh, licensee and his attorney are here. When we get them up to testify that uh, they are in fact moving forward with uh, putting a restaurant there. Up there. Good evening, how are you? Just identify yourself if you don't mind. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council, Ms. Fritzen, and Mr. Desiderio, Nelson Montero on behalf of Five Highland Place Associates, as well as Mr. Keon, who is one of the managing members of the Five Highland Place Associates. Monterey, if you don't mind, I'd like to swear your, your uh, client in, please. Sure. Move over. Place your right hand, please. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you guy. Yes, I do. Okay, would you please state your name and stay by the microphone, please. First thing you is... Put, you can put your hand down. Thank you. First name is Masood Kian. I mean Masood, last name is K-I-A-N. Okay, and your help address? Five, All Paul Farm Road, Lebanon, Jersey, 08833. Before they open it to questions, one of the issues, the issue was the last time that you did not have an active tenant for the premises. Would you bring us up to date on what's going on with regard to the premises and whether you have a lease signed, et cetera, and what's transpiring? Yeah, we've been actually negotiating, we negotiated already the lease in Mr. Campus, which is already have a restaurant in the town. With that part, we got it done. And we're still talking about some operating agreement done hopefully soon and uh, the second part is I got the permit to take the roof down there was the last day we put everything down I don't know any of you passed by the place the whole roof is down I'm gonna start because of the weather it got delayed a little bit but we're gonna start doing the roof hopefully weather permitting the next couple of weeks the roof will be down Met the designer the previous Sunday. We had read on uh, all the terms. My my partner wants to go with the designer, and I said okay. So we, I met them and we went over everything. And he's supposed to sign with them this Thursday. And hopefully, as soon as they give me the the plans, I'm gonna work and start uh, framing the inside. And members of the uh, of the ABC, I will just represent to you that I have been furnished with a copy of his lease, a lease agreement dated the first day of November 2017 between VJMR LLC, which, which is your company, right? Uh, and Five Five on Place Associates LLC with regard to the lease of the premises, which for is a term of, how long a term is it? 35 years. Oh, 35 years. Okay. <laughs> so, so uh, he wants the long lease. I said, I don't care how many years you want to keep it. Okay. So that's that. That is the status. I open it up to questions from the ABC. If there are any, you would have questions. I have no questions, but I would certainly entertain resolution. reinstating the license or okay. rescinding the previous revolution, whatever is the. Okay. This is a resolution. Resolution forty-three eighteen. Uh, reinstating these, this license, whereas on June 21st, 2016, plenary retail consumption license 
0711-33-007-006 came on for renewal before the Maplewood Apple World Beverage Commission. Now, whereas the Maplewood Township Committee unanimously denied the renewal of the license for the period 2016 to 2017, and whereas the licensee has requested the township rescind its decision of June 21st, 2016. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Township Committee of the Township of Maplewood City as a local ABC board, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that it hereby rescinds its decision of June 21st, 2016. Mr. Sturry, I have a question. Did you say that the June 21st, 2016, did you say unanimously? Yes. Yes. It was not. It was, it was not. not. I, I, I voted not to rescind. Okay. Then so we'd have to we'll, we'll amend it. revise that. Okay. I believe it was 4 1. Okay. We'll correct it. Okay. And uh, because I I didn't vote. Oh, you certainly can vote. To, that's not an issue. Oh, no, no. I'm just wondering did, am I allowed to make the motion? Sure. Okay. I, I, I'd like to make a motion to approve this resolution to rescind the prior. Re approval. Re rescind the resolution. To rescind the denial. 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 Okay. The, You're in the denial. <laughs> yes. We have a second. Second. Please call the roll. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Daffis. Yes. Mr. Lemberg. Yes. Mayor DeLuca. I'm happy to vote yes. It's yeah, been a very long time. struggle. I, I want to thank you for coming to the table. Um, this the operator of this restaurant will be the owner of Lorena's. Yes. Uh, Umberto Campos, and uh, it took some headbanging of you two guys to get together, but I think you have a wonderful marriage ahead of you. Yes. So it will be a beautiful place for a time. Yes. It's going to be one of the kind. Alto Piano. When's it going to be open? Well, since we're hiring the designer, they take a little longer. I was hoping we open sooner than later. Right now, my hand is tight because of them. Once they give me the plan, then we're going to submit it to the town for approval for inside. Once you guys approve it, we're going to be probably done with the roof in three weeks, weather permitting. And once I have the other plan, I'll submit it to the town. Once you guys approve it, we start hopefully maybe beginning of September. Hi, right. you have a question? I just want to. Tell them to have live music. <laughs> All right. We're missing it since Highland Place closed. I'll let him know because he's going to run the police. I know. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, the designer, to be honest with you, they, they go for everything. They even design the music for you. <coughs> so what music you play. So <laughs> that, that's cool. unheard of. But I, when I met them, they said, oh, we do everything. That's okay. That's cool. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Montero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you may secure from Mrs. Fritzen copies of these various resolutions. So basically what it ha has happened is your license has been reinstated for the 15, 16, 16, 17, 17, 18 years. So you're all current with them and current with ABC. And once I correct that resolution, we'll get to that resolution. So as far as ABC is concerned, you should be well set. 17, 18. You said 17, 18? 17, 18. Correct. Which runs through June of June of this year. So this you're, year. you're that, that's through correct. June, and then you'll be up with all the other licensees for renewal in June. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Councilor. Okay. The one concern I have before I leave. Now we're actively on the construction side. There's a fence which is in your property, next to my property, and they, somebody cut the fence, and people are walking through your property. They're jumping my parking lot in the back and it's really dangerous for me and for you guys but could you please somebody yes. will uh mr may i'm not sure that's ours but okay we'll have to find out whose face that is right it's really i don't know i think it's in your <coughs> we'll, we'll but, figure it out but if if somebody allow me i could fix it it's not a big deal but okay i can't touch it because it's not mine right Okay. We'll figure it out. With right. uh, we'll get the engineer take a look at that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're back. Do we need a motion to go back in? Yes, we need a motion to go back into township committee business. I, a, a motion to resume the township committee meeting. Second. Please Adams. Here. 
Mr. Daffis. Here. Mr. Lembrick. Yes. Made left. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Never followed me. Uh, so we have three budgets we're going to be talking about. The capital, the open space, and the personnel requests. Uh, how about if we do the open space first? Sure. Very good. <laughs> Try to get things done. Uh, I was not here for the presentation by the Open Space Committee, but we do have their recommendation. Uh, they do not recommend the buddy benches. They do not recommend the Greenway Engineering Study, and they do not recommend the basketball court installation, but they recommend all the others at the amounts that were requested. Is that correct? Correct. And Mr. Manning, on the basketball court, my understanding is that they are open to reconsidering that, or the Township Committee could just right. could just yes. uh, set aside the funds You know, once we have a plan. And I believe that there has been some money put aside for, for the design. For the design. Yes. But we and don't have the design yet. location, too. Right. So once I think the location's done, we could do the design and come back with, we'll have a real estimate of, you know, how much it will cost, et cetera. So. Um, and the buddy benches, what was the reason they said they weren't going to approve that? I, I recall they're saying they didn't. They didn't have complete costs. Uh, I thought it was because they didn't uh, think that it fit within. Yeah. I think that was correct. The trust fund mandate if yeah. it's a bench and it says you know buddy sit here is it was, it's well they odd. also mentioned that there were it was an incomplete application with regard okay. to the non not including the cost for installation oh uh, okay yeah right but if if but, the application yeah. was complete they, still would they would th there was still some strong reservation against whether or not that's within the uh, I think open if, trust fund mandate. Yeah, I think if recreation would amend their application, maybe and um, well, that could, they can. I mean, once you adopt this or once you approve it, right. then we'll move forward with it. It, it seems that things uh, come later and they're brought in front of them, so maybe they can amend it and come back. They meet quarterly, pretty yeah. Much. So, so the, and there was one issue around the. Uh, some of the staffing that's funded here. You you address that, Mr. Manning? Uh, did I? Where is that one? There were some memos that you went to. Um, yeah, I, it's my interpretation, Robert, Roger, and Mr. Desiderio and I have a slight uh, difference of opinion, but it says that it can be used for maintenance, that the money can be used no, to maintain facilities. All right, so. Does anyone have anything they'd like to say, either for or against the recommendation uh, that we received from the Open Space Trust Fund Advisory Committee? The only thing I'd like to say, Mr. Mayor, is that uh, once we do have the location and the design for the basketball court, I would not necessarily want to say that we have to wait a full year cycle to fund that. I think, I think when we're ready for that, we've been talking about that for a few years now. I think once we're ready, we should be able to uh, to appropriate those funds from the township committee. But typically, you would just bring it to them, saying that we're ready now. Here are this, this, this is what we need. They usually meet and either say yes or no and bring it to you. Of course, you have the final say. But yes, you can do that. There, there's no okay. So we, so we wouldn't have to wait for this 2019 budget no. cycle. Okay. No. You do that, that, but, that's all I wanted to say on that. Well, but let's let's look at this. Isn't aren't we approving six hundred and eight thousand six hundred and nine dollars? Wait a minute, six hundred and eight thousand six hundred and nine. Yes, sorry, the small print. So you're taking two hundred and twenty three four fifty from the uh, the unallocated, which will leave um, one fifty four. One fifty four. That's right. And so the basketball installation is two seventy five. So there's not enough. Well. We don't know the exact number because it hasn't been designed. Okay. And we don't know the location. Right. Yeah, I would be surprised if we had it. We still have to get the location, let alone the design. The design is okay. dependent on the location. I just think that, uh, just to be clear about your answer, it has to do with it if we have the money or not. Right. Before but, next year. Yeah. Right. But there, you know, there is a substantial amount of money, and not everyone finishes their projects and spends every dime. 
Right, well, well, but, but the OSTF also is being funded. Yes, the that's at the uh, 385,159 this that's, year. That's calculated in there. In the right, right. In the whole that's there in the calculation. We're bringing in 385. We're recommending to spend 608. That leaves its balance of uh, negative of 223, which we're applying to unallocated uh, balance of 377. So that leaves. If all these projects were funded 154. Yes. Yeah. Is there, yeah, as Mr. Manning said, we have, there's often un unallocated funds because a project that's applied for by a department isn't completed in time. And whereas before, CFO has changed the process a little so that they don't use it by the end of the year, it goes into unallocated. Right. And also, it doesn't get gone. It's just not dedicated to that project anymore. They have to reapply. And use it. Understood. And, and, and also, lights, for example, at, we can lay conduit for the lights. We don't have to necessarily put them in on the first round, you know, get the basketball court fixed. And then if you didn't have enough, you can put the lights in. Right. I, I think also one of the proposals may have had uh, something about benches or, or right. bleachers or something. And, you know, that's something that could obviously come later, if, okay. if at all. Got it. Okay. So, all right, so uh, can we get a motion to approve the recommendations from the Open Space Trust Fund Advisory Committee? So moved. Second. Any discussion further? Who's called the roll? Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Daffis? Yes. Mr. Limbrick? Yes. Mayor DeLuca? Yes. Okay, let's go to uh, new employees. So, Mr. Uh, again, we are talking about positions, not um, All new positions individuals. New. Right. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, we received a request for four captain positions. Yes. You are recommending not making any of those. Right. We don't know what the end results will be with uh, the, those positions were eliminated in, 19, in 1992. We don't know what the new setup will be if consolidation comes to. So, Mr. Manning, I have a question on that. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the, in fact, I think it was the only uh, delinquency or, or area of concern that was pointed out in uh, in the third party expert consultant consolidation report uh, was that we, you know, we didn't have these captains on the truck, uh, and I think that one of the things that uh, I'm hoping we might be able to do with the consolidation addition to save money would be to to meet that standard that the experts recommended. Do you, uh, Mr. Manning or Mr. Mayor, if, you've, if you're uh, familiar from the meetings you've been in, know if that's something we're realistically going to be able to do in the consolidation if we don't add captains in the MFD? Yes. Okay. All right. Then then I'm. I'm satisfied. Thank you, Mr. Manning. Okay. Uh, building inspector part time. Uh, Go ahead. What about the fire inspector for fire department? Where do you see that? No, see that. no we're, we're doing new positions. The bottom ones. Oh, we're doing new positions. Yeah. New positions. Okay. Uh, the building inspector part time. Yes. You're recommending this now. E we certainly have uh, the work to do. We are, we are taking people on uh, ad hoc. If we had a particular person that we, and we had a salary line for it, we could schedule them better. We could have, you know, we would definitely know that we had what we needed when these projects are being done and needed to be inspected. Right now, uh, if somebody's out sick, if our construction official's out sick, it's, you know, we're scrambling. So. And uh, I think I have uh, the backup for that at all. Do you... And it is the type of thing that you can do now with the understanding that when the height or the what is the, the, the amount of projects decreases, that we can either decrease hours, et cetera. This would be a part-time person and uh, typically they're either working somewhere else or several somewhere else's. What's this? 
Okay. So he says, my position includes, and he does these things. My position also is zoning officer. As the building subcode, I complete a certain amount of plan review. Based on a large volume of all phases of building part, I'm requesting a part-time inspector 20 hours a week at $35 an hour in order to serve the public appropriately and keep in line with timely inspections. Um, is that an arbitrary number, the hourly wage and the, the total of 33 I, I think 35 is what we pay all of our part-time inspectors. The number of hours may be more arbitrary. And currently we do <clears throat> all this with a shared service building inspector? Or what is this current? No, he, he is the only, um, the only building. The only building inspector, yes. But he when he has to be out, when he knows he's going to be out, he'll bring someone in. If he knows he's going to have a week of very heavy inspections, he will bring someone in. But it's always someone different. He doesn't always get to have the same person in. He's so going to have continuity. He also assigns projects to an individual ad hoc inspector. So, for example, Winchester Gardens right. is assigned to someone. Avalon Bay is assigned to someone. Right. Right. So You're talking when you say he. The <coughs> pronoun is referring to the construction code official. Yes. Yes. Unless so he has the right to bring on part-time people. Yes, he does. Well, he, he yes, he comes and asks me. Yeah, but he, yes, he brings part-time yes. people in now. Right. And I'm not sure. I understand to have a body there, but our work in town is going to go down. Right. Yes. That's so I'm not sure the last year or two years is really what we should be looking at going forward. Okay. And he already meets his needs by bringing in part-time folks. Yes, but it's very difficult to do it, and it doesn't always work smoothly. That's right. right. Yeah. Okay. But okay. he also, that's his only experience, because all this increase in building and projects has been while the construction code official has been with Maplewood. Right. So he's basing that on his limited knowledge right of, so of, i'm i'm hesitant to fund a you know position okay. which of course could be eliminated but i don't like to do that either got it no problem so we we'll, i would agree i, I would right. not want to do this right okay okay um bureau. next up is the records bureau clerk right we have a we have a part we have a full-time and a part-time Okay, the amount of open requests, the open requests for digital uh, media is, is becoming increasingly difficult to get people what they need in the amount of time that we have to do it. We have a part-timer and a full-timer, and they would like to make the uh, part-timer a full-timer. If, if, um, do we have the uh, paperwork? Why don't you bring that over here? Would you mind, Sonia? And so Roger has vacated his phone. And okay. Is that correct? The, all right, that's okay. Just it's the violation clerk and comparative salaries were done. The average salary is 46. The clerks are paid an average of 33. Uh, uh, Maplewood has not remained competitive. Okay, I stated this. A little, <coughs> this is a new position. Wait a minute. This is. Uh, I'm sorry. That's a Mer merit thing. I'm not. We're the, that that one is a merit. Sorry. Hey. Okay. No, that is. It. He just names it different. Right? Oh, he he's names not talking it. about a specific person. Oh, he's not. Okay. So he's asking to bring in. So how many hours will this person work? I think they work 35 hours a week. So it'll be a full-time person? Yes. They're currently we would, we would have then moved from one full-time, one part-time to two full-time yes. and one part-time. No, just two full-time. So we have one and a half uh, employees. Okay. We would go to two employees. What, what, what is the cost for that? Uh, it is going to be. No, I, it's listed no. here, but. Uh, funding request 18,000. So it would bring the person, the salary would be records court, uh, 27,500. What, yes, 
Right, because they're <coughs> starting out. Right, twenty-seven thousand five hundred dollars. So the difference is ten thousand approximately. Approximately ten thousand. No, no. This, this starts in, in July first, correct? Oh, okay. Then it's so five thousand. Well, I don't right. know. That's yeah. what I'm asking. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Yes, I didn't see it was a July first, and I think that they do that only because they don't know when the budget's going to be adopted. Correct. I'm sure he would like that. Right. So I, yeah. I, I'm a little unclear then why we have 27.5 yeah, uh, right. when it's a, a step up from a part-time person to a full-time person. Okay. You know what? I'm going to have to get you that information. Sorry. Okay. Can you see? Okay. So we're going to have to hold that one on hold. We figure that out. So we get. I tell you that information tomorrow. Okay. So, just so we're clear, you at the end of the day with the records bureau, he wants two full-time people there. Yes. Okay. So we just need to know how much money. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Because it's not twenty-seven five. Okay. Uh, DPW. These are the jitney drivers. You know what? Hold on. Now yes. these are the proposals to have the two drivers for the the new route. The new route. No, no, no. These are the emergency drivers. Can you get the two be the backups? I don't, we're we're I don't also going to need another driver for the new I route. I think that's in. No, the I think that I think they're okay. Hold on, we'll get we'll get the reality. Okay. And this is uh, new positions would implement, uh, we intend to implement a new Jitney route. Therefore, we require two additional drivers, an AM and a PM driver. We can eat, uh, it's easier to get the PM drivers, it's harder to get the AM drivers. So, anyway, two drivers. Additionally, in order to ensure that our growing fleet has sufficient manpower to cover in absences, he would like to hire two standby drivers. However, I'm not sure how we can do that. Okay. Okay? Right. Uh, according to the CDA, yeah, and, and we've already approached the union about cross training and it's not going well because they also represent the jitney drivers so we're going to have to figure something else out in case that happens so these two positions are for the jitney yes right? for the new not route. for the the substitutes that he had asked for not for the substitute that's and correct they're for one more route so they basically right. would one for an a.m one, one for a p.m yeah and those, so those salaries are each 22 eight uh, together. 20. No. Sorry. What's well, total? It's total. total. Eleven grand. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure how he got his numbers. It's fourteen dollars an hour to start, so it depends on you know it, how many hours they get, uh, and I don't know what the, the particulars are. He asked for uh, where is it? Um, Jitney drivers too. Yeah, it would. Uh, he asked for twenty two thousand eight hundred, and that's approximately what it would cost to get the two drivers to do that. Yes. And I think that starts. Oh, uh, starting year. July first. Yeah, that's half a year. Yeah. So it would be really would be half of that. Half that, or would it? No. Or is this half? Are you sure? Be, well, if it's. You figure, say, five hours a shift. That's twenty five hours. Of yeah, you're right. Fifty hours. You're right. Yes. Uh, I don't have my calculator. Um, so, uh, no, what's he got here? He's got. He has uh, twenty-two eight hundred, which would be for those two positions, because I'm not sure how many routes they're planning to run there. I mean, I don't know how the schedule is being. He's just going to do the same schedule. Same, same five, schedule. Yeah, five, okay. Five. All right. Yeah. So. I think that we have to anticipate the, I don't know where they get their numbers from. Okay. I think says it's to staff a new route. Right. Yeah, Avalon. it's the new route, the Avalon. That's that. the, the route that is going to right. pick up Avalon and, and then relieve the pressure Parker. on the Parker route. Right, and go to Maplewood Crossings, right? Maplewood Crossings, no. the Avalon? No. No? Okay. No, just Avalon, I believe, and then pick up some of the Parker people because we have right. uh, overcrowding. overcrowding. Right. Or it's just a big demand on it. Yeah. 
But I mean, I think if you're going to do it, you have to have the driver. Well, we have to have a driver. So yeah. can you just make, just get a yeah. number? Get a number. All right. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, recreation, building operations Actually, management. Actually, excuse me a second. Sorry. Go ahead. Before we move on from public works. Yeah. Um, I seem to see a justification form, a request for a new position called Parks and Shade, parks and shade that is not on. I don't that, have Parks and that Shade. That is a, a mistake because if you read it's replacing someone who's retiring. Uh, right, right. And right. So that's sort of listed as a new one. Yeah. Right. Got it. Let me right. Not sure why. Got it, got it. It, it takes a while to get it, though. The hang of things. Okay. Uh, this is the building operations manager for yes. the Woodland and Bergdorf. And yes. 106 or wherever else. Um, yeah, well, well, probably Bergdorf and Woodland is enough. Yeah, def yeah definitely. <laughs> and we really need someone there. Who is it? A, a yeah, real adult. And, and, no, we definitely and the, the more organized we are, the more money we bring in. So yes. this really covers. And this, this particular uh, position would make sure that people were there, you know, that it, a person of authority would be there that who could handle things, doors open and, Correct. you know, people backing yes. out and call the police yes. and do all that. And making sure that the bathrooms are Toilet paper and the floors are clean yes. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's uh, what? Are you okay for the building operations manager? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Recreation administrative assistant. You're not recommending that. Uh, wait a minute. Did you read? Okay. Which one? Uh, administrative assistant for recreation? No. Yes. Yeah. I I agree. I think that uh, they have three. They have three people there. Right. Make it work. And I think that, you know, if... All right, so long. That's the time I woke up last night. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the intern for your office. Yeah, $3,000. We, we think it's a good investment. It's very helpful to us, particularly the types of projects that, the uh, you know, with the new technologies out there, we need younger people coming in to kind of help us along. But also, we give them the opportunity to uh, learn about government and as a an opportunity for a career. And you know, Where we just think it's good. What kind of students? High school, college? No, no, college students. Yes. And do we already have college students? We, we we're working with uh, Seton Hall University. Uh, there is also we've had an offer from Felician College to do something. We could also work with Rutgers if we wanted, but mostly we would partner with either Kane College or um, Seton Hall University. And do we have we paid them in the past? Uh, we haven't had any in the past. Okay, then. We have not had any internships in our office in the past. Oh, okay. So, oh. but we now have ideas about what to do and how to use them properly. I'm in favor of interns. I just don't. I guess I would want you to go for free first. I've had like three free interns. Yeah, well, I mean, free's good. Not everybody can do free, but okay. I know, but if a college student is looking for experience. So is. So let, why don't we leave the 3,000, but you try to go free? Okay. That's. I like the way the administrator always supports the administrator's request for a cap. <laughs> engineer, staff engineer. Now, this is confusing. This is an existing person, correct? Yes. Okay. This is an existing person, which is a. Um, they want to change the title from the title and the responsibilities to bring it up to a much higher level to right. help with in house uh, computer aid system. Right. Computer, yes, CAD. And does the person system. have the capacity to do it? Is he skilled to do that? He, but they have minimal and they will be training for more. They have the capacity to learn this very quickly. Okay. Yes. They're a quick read. Okay. <laughs> we don't have a deputy engineer at the moment, right? At the moment, no. We're right. searching. We didn't get right. any offers, I mean, any responses for our last, so we're going out again. Are you okay with this, everybody? I'm okay with this. Yeah, assistant. We don't have a assistant engineer. She was... Uh, uh, yeah, no, well, pardon. She pardoned. Pardon. I'm, I'm fine with that. Okay. Tax assessor, seasonal worker. I don't think anybody's interested in that. Okay. 
right now. No, right now. putting another person there now. Yeah. Uh, crossing guard. This is the one additional crossing guard to yes. make it number four, correct? Right. Yes. All four. Yep. I'm in favor of it. Absolutely. Okay. okay. All right. So just to go down the list here, right. uh, we took out the building inspector. Uh, we're going to get more information on the records bureau clerk because that person's moving from half time to full time. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I got new glasses and they're not no, quite we're working here. right. We're okay. All right, so the first one is a no, the second one is a no, meaning- uh, well, What do you mean, the first one- We're four agreeing. captain's positions. That's no. not being fuzzy. Yeah, we're agreeing with your recommendation. Right. Right. Building inspector. We're not agreeing with your recommendation. You want to- Zero. Zero, okay, right. got it. Records clerk. Yes. We need more information because this is moving right. from more part time enough. to full time. We need to get clarity on the cost. Okay. Uh, Jitney drivers, we're in favor of. Right. But we've got to get the exact number. Yes. So, okay, so we'll get you uh, Building operation, yes. Okay. We agree with your recreation, zero. Okay. 3000 for the intern, but you're going to try to get somebody for free. Absolutely. <laughs> Staff engineer, we agree with the change in position and the additional amount yes. put there. Yes, got it. We agreed no social, seasonal worker rather, so, a social worker for the tax. <laughs> yeah, we agree so. no seasonal work. We agree right. with, we agree with right. the social worker. And we agree with the TC uh, $6,400 for the fourth crossing guard. Yes. Okay. Well, it's actually $8,000, but okay. Whatever. Yes. All right. All right. So we've got the positions done. Yes. Now we go to the capital budget. Okay. Get ready for that. Okay. We're going to start with engineering, right? Because that's what we do. Right? We're starting with engineering, is that what you said? Yes, I'm just waiting to get there. We got 1801. Okay. Yes, and which is the. Uh, Uh, what was it? Cap two. Seven. Seven. Oh, and you, but there's all, all the capitals in two. Yeah. But if you you've got your notes, your right, right. I don't know where you put your amendments. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, environmental improvements at various locations the DPW technical site, firehouse number one, other environmental issues, asbestos, air quality, and mold. Remediation, $18,000. And I recommend it because we always have these things coming up. And the Teneco eats a lot of money with environmental services and testing. No, well, we could go to jail, but other than that. <laughs> All right, yes, how is that okay? Okay, let's do it. Okay, 1802 is the municipal road repairs. Yeah, which is uh, pavement, uh, milling, overlays, and potholes for 30,000, miscellaneous repairs, 15,000. Wrought iron fence at train underpass at Baker and Maplewood, 30000 So uh, we got so it. We also added $20,000 for striping, which is yeah, not and 20, in the Yes, area. which was a, an addition, twenty right. k for striping. So that's why, because the numbers here on the right. project only amount to seventy five. Right. So the ninety five, because we talked about the striping, right. we're not going to be able to do it all with DPW. Right. That's, I am in favor of that. Yep. Okay with that? Yep. Yes. Okay, municipal road improvements. Uh, One million four hundred and twenty-one thousand three hundred and ninety-nine. Right. Right. And thirty-seven cents. Oh, forgot that. Uh, so I lowered it to what last year's was, but now if we look at eighteen oh six, which was the municipal aid for the NJDOT road reconstruction the mayor's informed us we're going to get another hundred thousand we could decrease that one from a hundred and four thousand to four thousand and we could increase this to eight hundred and fifty without doing anything right but can we come back to this because okay. uh, this is the all right this is a huge issue okay all right okay. Okay. no problem yeah so 1804 60 woodland road yeah uh, this is the woodland. Yeah. So 
there's some confusion as to whether or not the 200,000 was taken out by the township committee. I looked at my notes. It wasn't, I don't, we didn't ever make a decision. You're recommending we not do the 200,000 for- Yeah, the 200,000 was for the- Air conditioning. Yeah, the HVAC, because we're, first of all, we're still working in there. Once, once we get the elevator, yeah. once we- yeah, Is there anybody who wants to make the argument for putting the air conditioning in this year? No. No, let's, let's wait until uh, we finish the rest of the building. But um, is there any savings or is there any logic in while if there's while we're doing the elevators? Because when you're putting in all those all the vents and pipes and everything for for the you know yeah. for the air conditioning makes sense. Is everything gonna be closed up? Like we're talking about not doing it because stuff's not finished. But does it make more sense to do it while stuff's already ripped open because you're going to have to stick all the other stuff in there? No, because I think we're going to be going out the we're the next to the stairwell outside doing the, some of these things and inside. No, it doesn't. It's not. The only argument I would make in favor of the HVAC being done sooner than later is the main issues we have with soundproofing and disturbance stuff. Joe? Yes. Are you okay? Well, I didn't know I hit snooze. <laughs> God. All right. Sorry. You know how to put your phone on silent? I'm yeah, right? Yes, I just we have your... Yes, my, my daughter's having a medical issue. That's why I get to do okay. oh, right. So, everything is okay. So, I was yeah. just saying that the HVAC, the good part of doing it is made the issue that's been the most contentious for... Right years which is soundproofing and if it's air conditioned then we don't have to leave they don't doors open because it's too warm in there and all that kind of stuff well, the problem is we're already spending more yeah. than than our target so i would not be in favor of including yeah, this I, just right. it out. Okay. I, agree. I agree okay so the so the 730 uh is, is we're taking the 200 out so that leaves 530, you subtract the 175 grant, so the 355 is correct, correct? Right, yeah. okay. Mr. Lembrick didn't weigh in. Did you? Yes, yeah. okay. yes, That's fine. yes. All right, okay. Build, 1805 building improvements at various locations. Right, uh, 2000, location 2016, 500, consisting of the following. Municipal town hall parking lots, well, of all of them, I didn't think that we should, I thought that we should change from 216, on, on February 3rd, we changed from 216 and- No, no, you changed it from 243.5 to 216.5. Yes, right. We removed steam cleaning of the walls and floors at 20K, removed plaster repairs, 10K, and removed 3K from miscellaneous. Is that right. right? Yes. So the one thing that was not included in this that we talked about at the day was 27,000 for roof repairs at Bergdorf. Yeah. I think we have, don't we have that elsewhere? No. Wait, wait. It's, it's in there. Yeah, there, it's Where? there somewhere, I know, because I talked with Oh, Paul. it says Bergdorf. Yeah, yeah, it's part of it. Yeah. Okay. No, that's, wait. Oh, no, that's, well, that's plaster that's repairs. At that's, that's at Bergdorf. No, we're talking about 27,500, right, 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 right. 27,000 for Bergdorf repairs. Where is it? Right, it's in. Uh, no, 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 that's, where is it on this sheet? This sheet. Well, under which one it was it? Was under that? Wait, all right, because 1805. So the 11,000 for asbestos, 5,000 miscellaneous, 20, miscellaneous 20,000. And I said to get rid of same level of choice. All right, you remove the steam cleaning. Right. You remove the plaster repairs. Right. But I didn't remove the miscellaneous. miscellaneous. Right, which is 20,000. Right. right, but the 27 wasn't on this. It no, wasn't. It was an add on. For of that yeah. You mean after? While we were in the While meeting. we were at the meeting. Right, okay. So that brought the 243 plus 27 makes it 270, right? 27 for, okay. So you have to add 27, because I spoke to Paul. Uh, oh, I remember. Don't we have any money in our left in any of our accounts for Bergdorf? I don't have any idea in the trust fund. We said we'd look at it, but I don't know if we have money in there. If we do, we can, but we have to okay, do that. Okay, yes, way. got it. Also, yeah. there wasn't there 50,000 in CDBG money? No, that was no. I have written down, I don't know why. And then it lowered the amount that was requested for. I think the CDBG money is various ADA improvements. Is that the one you mean, 1815, which is the last? 
um, West Item under his. Uh, that's 1850. Yeah. Oh, okay. Jesus. Okay. So we're going to add 27 in there. Uh, I'm concerned about taking out the 10 for the plaster repairs because we have this huge hole in the wall at Bergdorf. I was, uh, so there were we, what, when, when they had the. Uh, no, no, in the, in the community room. Yeah. Yeah, right up front. It was supposed to be right where we were facing the stage over on that side. No, no, in the community room, not the theater. Oh, okay. In the other, yes. Yeah, okay. in the sir door. Bird yes. door for the community room. So we need to we need to put the ten thousand back in too. Ten. Yeah. Okay. What? Okay. So what are we agreeing to in this? Okay. You agreed to uh, add twenty-seven thousand for Bergdorf for the roof, right? And ten thousand back for the plaster repair at Bergdorf. Okay. Hopefully, we'll do the roof repair first. So can, I, can I make a suggestion? We do this. Assume what we agree on. If you look at the projects under 1805, yeah. So we're agreeing to the municipal town parking lot reconstruction, yes. correct? Yes. That's 150. Yes. I, I guess I'm going to dissent on that. Okay. Uh, municipal, uh, we're not agreeing to town hall steam cleaning the walls at this point. Okay. Uh, municipal town hall roof repair and study we are agreeing great right? eleven thousand yep. five hundred environmental abatement mold asbestos etc five thousand dollars miscellaneous twenty thousand dollars you may bring that down to seventeen what you're bringing that down yeah. to 17. seventeen right yeah right over there and okay what does that represent yeah miscellaneous that's good because when you go and do any of this stuff you never know what's there you know under it okay. so we gotta so and the plaster repairs at 60 Woodland and Bergdorf is 10. Right. Putting that in, keeping that in, and yes. then 27,000 for roof repairs at Bergdorf. Yes. So. I have a question. Okay. The municipal town hall parking lot reconstruction curbs and sidewalks. Are we talking this back here? Yes. And all the sidewalks around. What about the front? Yeah, Where that's. The plate is uh, no, I think we had that. We had that last year. I think that's still yes. money that's available from last year's, which we didn't have. The estimate seventy-five k to repair slate walkway and front will be paid with twenty seventeen building improvement. Right, right. So that's, that's last right. year's money. Yeah, so I agree with Evans. Uh, I don't understand. I don't see a huge need for what the parking lot needs. Look, if it does nothing else, it definitely needs to be. Uh, no, uh, yeah, but it doesn't yeah. need to be reconstructed. No, well, he was going to make recommendations to you about how you could get additional parking. Let me think, where would that have been? But um, I think that it does need some curb work, and it does need so we can we can hone that number back. Let's work on this 150. Yeah, just now he did say that the sidewalks around the, the building is are to be pretty repaired, bad that they're crumbling yeah. and heaving, and they need to be. Yeah, repaired. I just think. And knowing the engineer from working with him, I think he's going for the gold here, and I think we could go. All right, so we'll, we'll revise this number, 150, look at, mm -hmm. okay, which I'll get to you. 150, look closer. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and we, and we want to strike it and yeah. all that stuff. We didn't, we don't, I don't know if we need to spend that kind of money. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll all right. Uh, 1806. This is the DOT. So this grant changes from 500 to 600 thousand. Right. So the amount is 4,000 that we need to put in for that. Right. It gives us that. 100, That's 100 thousand dollars. Although we've spent other money. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, we added 20 here. We added we added 27 and stuff. All what right. About the money that we just got. That was it. That's yeah, it. That's, that's a 600 thousand for okay. Boyden. Right, it was 500, now it's 600. And this will do the entire Boyden, right? From Irvington Avenue to the border with uh, Irvington. No, 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 no. Irvington Avenue to Springfield Avenue. Yeah, to, oh, only to Springfield. Wow. And then the Springfield Avenue to the Irvington line is under the municipal road. Okay, got it. I, I knew he said he was going to, the whole thing would be done, but okay. So, uh, yep. Maplewood Avenue. Improvements, various locations. Which are? We put that down at 100, and why? Oh, right. he pulled out something, right? Yeah. He pulled out the bump outs and stuff, I think. Yeah, as right? per his, yeah, the bump out, and that was his request. Right. Okay. Not ready for that. So we're, 
no bump outs or just the one at the corner by the burg door? Looks or people would have. Um, Let me see. He said, is this the revised? Durand, Baker, and Lennox. Right. Those were where we were going to uh, revise the curve alignments to include wind. That's ridiculous. Improvements are proposed to revive curve alignments. Uh, associate payment repair will be made and other improvements, including twice. So. <laughs> oh, I keep hitting snooze. I'm sorry. Oh, Interrupted yes. yourself this time. Yes. <laughs> 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 Very funny, Roger. Um, Such a funny. Oh wait, it says improvements to Maple Wood Avenue with paper replacement program. It is understood that a separate budget covers the replacement costs at Maplewood Avenue for all three phases. Improvements would include curb bump outs and associated pavement repair, so striping, we... and he brings it down to thirty thousand dollars. But this is his request, right? Yes. He had a higher request before. So bringing it down, is that because originally he wanted bump outs at all four corners of right. the bank, and now he's only considering that one? Less bump one. outs. Yeah. yeah. And then yes. he's including the curve alignment for bump outs at Durant, at Baker and Lennox. We don't. We don't even know what that's designed like yet. No, right, exactly. So I think. So we probably brought it down to 30 because it may end up going next year. That's right. Or. Like the one way and the. Okay. Right, because we don't know what we're doing with the tra uh, transit lot. But, so he may need that for maybe uh, it's some planning work. Of that. We'll check it out, but he did bring it down himself. So, right. Okay. We'll, get a qu we'll get an answer to why he did that. Okay. The uh, in house. In house engineering. Are we okay with that 30? I just want to make sure. Well, okay. let's leave it there now. We can, okay. We can get the why. Okay. Okay. Uh, the in house engineering service. Now, this is, a, this is an allowed charge yes. to cover our internal engineering costs. Yes. Okay. Because we do everything in house. Hardly. But we do pay ourselves for our time because that's yeah. what we would do if we had to go out. Okay. Traffic calming various locations 25. All right. So perform various traffic calming measures, which include speed bumps. Yes, that's right. Yes, 25. Yeah. Yeah. It's just very. Yes, for that. Okay. Now, on the various traffic signals, he had 30, but he bumped it up to 45 because we want to do the whole avenue. Yeah, he, right. So we're going to do the whole, right, from, from Union to Irvington. Right. Right. Yeah, we need to. Right. Okay. Okay. Sanitary sewer improvements, various locations, 25,000, yeah. same as last year. We were able to do seven or eight. Yeah, of decent projects. projects. These are the prevent the infiltration, so it helps with our sewer. Yeah. It does that, yes. and there's some sort of. Uh, some blocks don't have any outlets or, you know, there's flooding, right. so we do that. Yes. All right, the paver replacement, $350,000. Oh, $350, yes. We have, we've already approved last year $350,000. Right. We haven't yet agreed to a cost share, although it's, I think it's clear that there's going to be some kind of cost share. Okay. Um, Something for... Uh, Next year, uh, if we funded 350 now, right? I don't think the intention of this committee is to have them pay a third necessarily. Correct. Right. Correct. So if, but it, but they could. So we may figure out. I guess what I'm saying is, I think we should fund it right now, right. and then figure out how we're getting the. The remaining three third years. right so that would be where the uh the, that the, would be the when we contribution came and whether it's all or some of that right that the uh village alliance or the property owners or however we work that out right right but that would be for discussion and that'll probably take a little while because that'll take too long we wouldn't be able to pass <laughs> this so are we planning right. on actually going out this year for the first two phases yeah, yeah. right okay yeah uh, is that okay then so is that okay 
So I guess the one question is, do we want to change it from three phases to more phases? Right. Uh, because I'm concerned about not having enough money in the road improvement project, and we're already bumping up more than our target of 80%. But four, but four phases, I mean, that like just drags on so long, and it looks, at, and then you don't even kind of notice it almost at the end. It's like, oh, well, we've been doing that. I don't, I, I think don't that's something we need talk to the engineer about, but in the meantime, I think we can, are you talking about reducing the 350 for this year? Yeah, I would reduce it by 100, put 250 in. Oh, wait. And we have 350, that well, would give us six. Well, we can take six. it from the municipal, the town hall parking lot. 50, so that he can do what he, so that, forward with what we were talking about trying to do. And yeah. then figure out the funding next year or during but this year. It's not just the town hall parking lot. It's there's some of that money has got to be used for curbs and sidewalks. Yeah. Around the building. We've right. I know, but okay. 100, it's not going to be 150. I've guessed 50. I don't really know, but the parking lot is in bad shape, and we've had people trip. Just letting you know. Yeah, patching. We could do patching. What was that? The patch. Well, yeah, I think we're be, yeah. people have tripped in this parking lot back here. People trip everywhere. You can't yeah. Face hey, yeah, no, I know. Yes. Yeah. So let's let's. Uh, what do you want to come back to this one? What are you doing? Two coming back, back to no, we're coming back. Eighteen twelve, coming back. Oh wait, eighteen twelve. Underground store. Uh, I'm sorry. Municipal inspection vehicle replacement. Yes. I think they really actually need. This is that old car they have. Yes. It's, yes. Which will probably pass down to some poor soul, but <laughs> or sell it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. DP underground storage tank relocation project. Yeah. This, we have to do this? This is, yeah. And that actually is just to get the study done and designed for the actual project, which will be next year. And we are under, uh, we have figured out how we're going to insure ourselves for the next two years but that'll be the end of it. Nobody else, we happen to be in a, in a policy that automatically renews us for X period of time. But if we didn't have that, we would not get coverage because of the age of the tanks. Yeah. So, so if we waited a year, if we put this off till next year. The design, this is just to design it. Mm -hmm. Next year, we're gonna need the actual money to do the project. But by that time, we'll know how much that actually is. It could be it, it could be up to a half a million dollars to do that. It's enough for construction. Well, yeah. I understand. Yeah, right. Because we have to dig them out, and then we have to relocate them above ground, and and do some other things. But uh, and and that's praying that there's no contamination. Yeah, I don't see how we can't do this. You have to start the project. Yeah, you gotta start it. Yeah. Boy. Okay. Uh, CDBG various ADA improvements. The total is 197, 198. We're getting 170 from the county. CDBG, and you're putting 25. Yeah. Do we? Is there any problem? Do we have to make the total up here, just in order to get the grant? No, we'll just do 100. Mm, 795. I'm between about two thousand dollars. If you want to, right. yeah, I just wanted to. Okay with that. Yeah, it'll be fine. All right, fire department. Okay. Command vehicle, you're saying zero, we don't get that. I yeah, agree. we'll have to figure that out when. Everybody okay comes. with that? Yeah, well, I guess similar to the question I asked before, you know, do, do we think, do we think this is something that when we combine forces with, with South Orange, we won't have a need for this vehicle, or do we just think we want to wait on this vehicle so that we can purchase it? as a combined department. We think that, that uh, we will not need a second command or a third command. Yeah, but, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the radio system, we have to do. We have to. Right. Rescue equipment. Yep. Yes. Uh, garage door replacement has to be done. We can't get the engine in if we don't. No. Personal protective equipment. This is this the uh, 
The washer dryer? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that the washer dryer? Yes. Okay. Yes. You but you don't you're not asking you're not recommending the storage rack. No, not this time, no. Okay. They're storing stuff now, so don't you go by. They have a line in there. Okay. Uh, is it okay, everybody? Yes. All right. And fire, you're saying no on the architectural design. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, let's wait on that. And the antivirus. Yeah, they afraid, desperately they need this. Of, they're getting viruses all the time. Oh, uh, yes. So let me go back to the protective equipment. For, for that? 1805 you're talking about? 1805. Or 1806? 1805. Yes. What about it? That's the washer and dryer. Yes. Right. And, and, uh, Okay. And that's when they come in, they've done a fire, they wash the outfit that they have because it's full of smoke and... No, I'm just, I know, I remember from the meeting, um, I'm just trying to think if the merger affects that. I don't um, think so. No, but it doesn't no, because no. we still have our Whoever. personal assets. And right. Got it. Okay. Okay, police department, you're recommending everything they ask for. Is there anyone who objects to any of these? No. No. Not to these requests, no. No, I'm, I'm excited for the e-ticket. I think that's going to yeah, Me too. I think so, too. Yeah. What? We're excited for the e-ticket. E system. Oh, yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. yep. On the public works, you're recommending everything except the utility the tractor, yes, and the the brine tax system, Tech, yeah, and components, right? Now you're recommending an additional jitney. Well, and I yes. have some questions about that. Okay. Well, don't we need it for the new route? We have no, one we already for the have new. One. This is to buy uh, a backup. Backup. Uh, and I think we have this a backup. Is, this is to buy a new one. This is to buy a new one. Yes. And take one of the ones we older have ones and, and make, make it, it a backup. Right. Which we're I think, just did concerned. He, say, he yeah. said we had three? six jitneys. Yeah, but did he say we had three backups? No, we have six jitneys. Okay. Uh, four. Four being used. Right. Wyoming Parker, Maplecrest, and Hilton. Right. But we're going to add a fifth one. Right. And then we'd have one backup. Right. Which. I already have six buses. So he's he's concerned, if I remember, his justification with the age of the uh, A 10. Uh, yeah, he's saying that it's a 2008, which so it's uh, 10 years old. The aging jitneys require significantly more maintenance, thereby making them unreliable as they may be out of service at any time. This purchase will be made through a co-op, yeah. Yes, that's why, you know, when people say, oh, we may not have one, you know, I get like, well, nervous about that because one of our draws really is this service that we have. All right, so what's the pleasure of the Township Committee? Keep it in or take it out? Keep. Well, I'm not sure. Very decisive. Right. Right. Well. Well, I mean, I. Well, yeah. I think Joe. I think what Mr. Manning is is right that if we want to make sure that we have a reliable service, as we talk about New Jersey Transit not investing in itself, right. mm -hmm. that we need to continue to invest in these things because they're very important to the real estate market, and the it actually allows the area further away from the train station to be more competitive and right. robust as far as the demand for buyers because they have a jitney. I'm yeah. okay with this, but I really want to revisit this year uh, the costs that the permit, commuter permit, you know, we increased them two years ago, but they're extraordinarily low compared to other commuter towns in our area. and. Um, I think, think we need to look at user fees for that. I think we need to start seriously considering upping the cost for permits and, or even for the jitney permits. Yeah. 
because we have a percentage, so we may have to shift that. So yes, when we did that a yeah. couple years ago, but, it, right. but I think we need to. Every two years, I think we actually, is it that right, Mayor, or is it every year? Every two, every two years. years. So we'll be up for it this year. That 2018. Okay. Yeah, I mean, my only question would be, do we do this this year or next year? So I, we may as well do it this year because I, yeah, okay. you, know, you know, being as a capital expense, uh, you know, the difference between putting it off one year in the long, in the long term isn't going to matter. So okay. I think we do it as an insurance policy. Uh, funny enough, you've recommended all the administration's requests. <laughs> oh, no, did I? No, oh, that was, oh, uh, did I? Okay. Sonia, yeah. Sonia did. Are we okay with that? So we're moving forward with the JD file. Yeah. I yes. Think so. I think that's a good idea. And all of the others except for? Yep. Yep. Except okay. for your... And, right. Okay, also, right. has any com concerns? No, no I, any I, concerns. I, I, I had a question on the parking kiosk, 18-01. Yes. yes. Right. And where did we decide we're putting them? How many? Because there were a couple different scenarios we discussed. Two. There will be two new kiosks if this is go, goes through, and they will be approximately in the same. Certainly, the one in front of the train station will be mm -hmm. right there. The other one is probably going to move because of the yeah, street. It will be in the Baker Street lot, correct? Yes, the no, Baker no, Street. Baker Street, Street lot. We'll move one in the Baker Street lot and one at the train station. Yes. The one in the Baker Street lot will be moved. Probably so over near here. the, uh, what is that, The where they sit and have the ice cream. Yeah, yeah, around there. Because yeah. the other one just, I don't know how people keep backing into that, but it happens. <laughs> they do. Because uh, what, what, uh, we already approved buying one, didn't we? No, 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 no. we didn't buy one. No, we we yes. are, these are a different, this is just this just these are a different kind. Than yeah, right. Yes, right. And is that why the number's different, Sonia? Because I remember it was 19K for so two of them. Thanks. Right. The, the numbers were different because they've got some additional qualities like a heating system and um, they're, we're moving away from solar because technically that would give us more issues. We're changing the batteries like probably three, four times a week. So the electrical would be more efficient for this use. And we'll keep it warm so that, you know, things don't get stuck and when it's uh, raining, it gets right. damp. And right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, IT life cycle. Are we okay then with the administration's requests? Yes. All right, library. Uh, you agreed to everything. Are you recommending everything except you reduced the hundred thousand dollar request to fifty thousand yeah. dollars? Yeah, because uh, some of that has to do with uh, moving logistics and yes. planning. I, I don't. Uh, we got some additional information on the library. Do you have that in there? Backup for for the yeah. for the architect and for the there are hundred thousand the, dollars the hydrologist yes okay you, how much is the hydrologist I'm sorry the hydrologist architect she's got a geotechnical geotech uh, it's twenty five thousand okay. And then what else does she have? Architectural thirty thousand, grant writer consultant twenty five thousand, and then the library building consultant for logistics and relocation services is twenty thousand. Okay. That what are you saying? That's part of eighteen oh one? That's eighteen oh one at the hundred thousand. I get it. Yeah, I'm concerned that we I, can, I understand what you're saying about the 20,000 for the logistics person. I'm just concerned that we that we have enough resources to apply for the grant. I don't know what they're going to require as far as architectural drawings. Fine. Do we know the latest on the timing of now? Uh, May. Okay. May they're going to come out with the regulations. Okay. So so really. It no, the capital no. budget will be available on May 1st. If we work this right, the way. We yeah, no, we. This would be. Uh, yeah. I would recommend that we add another twenty-five to this. Seventy-five. All right. Just to, just to be safe that we have whatever we need yeah. to make the application. I, I agree. I mean, we may not right. spend it, but I, right. I, I think we should make sure we have it. If it's due in, if the application, oh, the application won't be due in May. You mean that? No, just. just Regulations will be right. I got it. Okay, fine. No problem. Then over the summer, then there's, then there's a period of comments, and then the, over the summer, the application. 
So we put like, too much time, money in this oh, so far yeah. To, yeah. Yeah, to nickel and dime. Yeah, to, to get quite a now. Yes, that's right. Okay. <clears throat> So, yeah, and the rest, uh, they and the rest you, uh, yeah. you recommended what they've asked for. Recreation. Ah, okay, 106 Burnett, you, they asked for 15, you're recommending 10? And, yeah, we've been pouring a lot of money into that building, and okay. I think, you know, it, 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 back it, a little. It looks good, but I, I, excellent. Yeah, but, right. I, you know, but I, I do think they'll be able to, uh, to do a lot there yeah. with 10 grand, considering how far we've come. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the community pool window and door replacement, you're recommending 20? Yes. Now, do we have a sense of how, you know, we have the $100,000 from Avalon Bay coming? Yes, it's coming. Can we use that for yes, this? Yes, absolutely. But, but we, yeah, we, you know, we have a, we have a, uh, a filter that might need right, to be Right, do we know how much that filter's going to cost? Do you have any idea? It's around uh, two fifty oh. to 300000 yeah, that's the estimate that, that we were sent. Right. Because uh, I know the South Orange has just put out a bid for one. Okay. We're going to have some real numbers. We'll have real oh, okay. Numbers. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I mean, we got yes. a proposal. Did you get the same proposal that I got? Yeah. yeah. It was sort of a, a professional solicitation, but that was that was roughly the range they gave. Uh, our engineer our actually had somebody out there. Pardon me? Our engineer actually had somebody out there, and that's where he got that cost estimate. Gotcha. So, so I think it would probably be better to absorb the twenty, and like have that hundred around for yes. the other things. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. All right, twenty thousand for the window and door replacement. Yeah. Uh, you're not recommending anything for the stage in Memorial Park, the woodland third floor, the woodland no. parlor painting. No. I agree with all those not funding. Yeah. No, I. I mean, I. I it's not. You're not saying we don't do them. You're saying we wait. Yeah. Particularly with the woodland until we've done some yes. more of the... Yeah, yes. there's no need. I mean, because we have the elevator, we still can't use it until the staircase is in. Right. So, right. Yeah, you know, we, we, we've got some more to do on the bones before we yeah. start filling it out. Okay. I'm concerned about the uh, stage memorial park. I think they yes. need to run yes. it. Yes, yes. Okay. 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 So, okay. Uh, the lighting grid at the bird door for the community room, 7,000. You've you agreed to that? Yes, I think it's important. It will. All right. So function better. Anybody have any objections to uh, Mr. Manning's recommendations for recreation? No. Okay. Municipal right. court. The POIA is, uh, yes. is a salary yeah. position, so it can't be capitalized. Yeah. Yes. We're going to be doing the carpets. Yes. Okay with that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Health department. We're giving uh, Mr. Rowe a dead animal pickup. Yeah, he needs a bigger thing. Yes. 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 Okay. So, uh, going over. Here are the things that we still have to talk about 1803 Municipal Road Improvement. All right. Uh, yeah, we haven't discussed that. No. 1812, the Maplewood Ave paver replacement phase. 1812. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, we did. We did save $100,000 at 1806. Yes, right. You keeping a total of this? We did add 27,000 for 1805. 27, that's minus. And we did add 25,000 to library 1801. So that's 52. 52, 150, well, so that's 48. 48 we have 48 play. left, right. That, you know, doesn't, Tip the scale either way. Right. right. And we're already over our. Uh, a little. I have to refigure it. Uh, Juan has indicated to me that, that he may have some changes in the um, debt service. So. Okay. Because roughly we're paying off the debt service. Right. So here's, here's a problem we have, and this is a problem of success. We used to pay off $4 million a year in debt. So we did 80%, so the amount we had to play with was about 3.2. So we, we redid the debt. We, we refinanced the debt, and our payments went down to 33700 So that's driving now with that 80%. That's what it says right here. Take a look at it. No, no, I know that. I said I have new information today that, that, that number, number may be more than, okay. yes. Okay. That's all. all. Right. But if you add the if you add the the debt 
the notes and, and the environmental loan, it comes up to about $4 million yeah. anyway. All right. So we're about, if we use the 80%, we're already about 240, well, we're about 200,000 now because we have right. 48,000. Yeah. So we're already about 200,000 above. But at the same time, and we, we instituted this policy at the beginning of the Great Recession, and it served us very well. And but our streets are really no, we're getting horrible. So maybe we need to change it a little to increase the stuff that we pay on roads every year. Like if what would five percent of that be? All right, who is on? So, no, five five percent would be another hundred fifty thousand. What? Well, five, five of, Seven. Of, of, of a, a million is twenty thousand, right? Wait. No, 5%. 5%. million is 200. <laughs> right. Sorry. Bro. All right. 200,000. No. 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 5% of a million is $50,000. Right. 50. So 4 million would be 200,000. 200, right. So, so we're there already. Right. Is that what you're saying? Right. Yes. If we, if we, all right. All right. So we're 20. If we went to 10, right? Yes. That's another. Right. If you took $4 million. Multiply it by ninety percent. What do you get? Uh, we hit three million six hundred thousand dollars. My battery's right? Sorry. We're kind of in between. Right. With this. I'm with you. So right now we're at three four. Um, I would like to see us bring up the municipal road improvement to a million dollars, which is an increase of say if that's fifty, that would be eight two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand above where we are now. Yeah, because we have yes. 48,000 left yes. over from that thing. So right. that brings us, then that would bring us up to about that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that. Because this year we're talking about doing the uh, some curb and apron replacement. It does add up. Yeah, so maybe you want to rethink that. So, you know, so it's, how much debt are we retiring this year? Are we retiring $4 million? Or about $4 million. Million? Yeah. Okay, so you said three point seven. It's three. I'm sorry. It's three point uh, three point nine eight one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Close all right. All right. Yeah. I just I just want to make sure we're not we're not taking on more than no. we're retiring. No. No. It's, it's three. So, so, it's so three. even if we went up to three six, we're still retiring substantially more. We're just not retiring. Correct. What we what we had before, but the problem's only getting worse. So it really does need to be addressed. But we'd be. And when we did this years ago. It was a plan of 25 years, and it was like $28 million or something. It was, it was like a million dollars a year that you had to pay. So we haven't done that. Yeah. So um, it's good. my only concern is that we have enough staff or time to, to do all of a million dollars worth of that. Well, here's the thing. With, uh, with a million dollars, 240 of that is drainage. Okay. Okay, that's about five streets with drainage. Then we had one, two, three, four, five, six roads. We're only going to be able to do four roads, even with a million dollars. Okay. You mean with the new curbs and stuff? Yeah. Okay. And some of the roads are large. Some of the long, yeah. like Jefferson okay. is long. Yeah. Uh, Boyden Avenue is long, right. even from the half of it from Ir from the Springfield to the Irvington line, it's still yeah. long. So they're they're going to be impactful yeah. uh, improvements, but they're they're long. So and we have to do Maplewood Avenue. That's good. Really? I was just there today. I almost felt like I thought it was a swimming pool you had over there. Okay, so where do we bring this? We go into a mill from seven fifty. Yeah, I would bring it. I would urge I us to go to a million dollars. I, I would support that. Yes. Okay. We'll get you. Are right. you going to do yes. new numbers? What? You're going to do new numbers? Yes, we'll do the numbers and we'll get the answers and get you a new sheet. So, you know, just ballpark it. We've historically taken on only 80% of what we retired. This year we'd be doing approximately 90% of what we retired. Right. I'm sorry. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. All right, but you know, but, we, we, but we're still leaving a good gap where we're retiring. Yeah, the yes. delta between what we're retiring and yes. what we're okay. So, so the other thing is that we have in our budget for 2018 
a capital improvement fund of $248,000. But based on your numbers here, we're probably closer to $200,000, right? So yes. we would, uh, we're going to have about a $50,000 savings in our operating budget. Uh, well, let me do the numbers. Okay. Yeah, because he, he's got, in this, in this sheet, He's got, you got 248,000. Oh, oh, that's what you were referring yeah, to. I'm talking right? about this. Okay, I thought you were talking about this. No, 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 I'm talking about this. We have, we, oh, yeah. you plugged in 248. Yeah. We're yeah. not, we're only going to be going about 200,000. Yeah, so it'd be, yeah, yes. So we should be, we should save a little money here, which will be eaten up by the addition of the DPW salaries in this, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, Mr. Manning, let's just talk logistics. You get this to us. We talk about this at the next meeting. Right. And then, if you agree, we'll have it get ready for introduction at your next meeting. March 20th. Oh, we didn't revisit the papers. Right. Well, I'm sorry. Thank you. Well, what do you want to do with the papers? I thought I gave a very good idea. You did. 350000 as we talked about this year. And then the rest of this year, we figure out how we're cost sharing to decide what goes budgeted next year. And, or we can check with the engineer tomorrow to see if 250, reducing that by 100, would, you know, be enough for him to do a substantial. And have him be able to like stop mid block. Yeah, somewhere. that wouldn't. Yeah. I, you know, I'm I'm kind of agreeing with your initial. But yeah, 350. 350 because yeah, that was uh, that was the plan and yeah. We can always make the adjustment in the next phase to uh, have some kind of cost share. Yeah, but even if you have cost share, it's still going to be. It, we're still going to have to put that kind of money out. Yeah, we're going to put the money out. The they money is going to come very small yes. over twenty years. Well, no, ten years. Well, ten, ten, years. Years. ten years. Okay. Okay, but twenty but, years. But, but us uh, appropriating the money now does not preclude us from implementing the cost sharing and no that's absolutely no, correct not oh all right well then yeah right. what, what are we talking about let's just go ahead no e even if you had all the money we're going to do it you right. could still <laughs> cost share yes right. yeah okay okay all right I, i'm good with sticking with the 350 now. thank you okay yeah. uh let's see if we can get out of here yep yep yep, yep. department report Wait, right? yep. well we oh, still have to we still have all right uh, we're going to move. We're going to move quick. Reports. No reports. No. I report. Oh. All right, Mr. Manning, report. No report, Mayor. <laughs> you did enough tonight. Believe it or not. I reported. Oh. Okay, Mr. Desiderio. Mayor, I have no report. So let's just talk a little bit about your, uh, the, the stuff you sent us about the new liquor license. Yeah, okay. We can talk about that. So, uh, you know, based on what you said, we're allowed to do the historic method, which is essentially put out a, an RFP. Less than that. And they say, you know, now rarely used. And then the second <laughs> is the bid, the public sale option. Correct. This goes to the highest bidder, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. We can set a minimum? We can. It also says that the applicant meets all of the special conditions or requirements stated in the notice. Uh, a number of us have talked about the desire to see that liquor license go to a place in town other than Maplewood Village. Mm -hmm. uh, when we raised it this morning in economic development, you suggested that that may impact uh, the price. The price. price. Clearly. I, would, I mean, I can say clearly, I think it would. You know, I, I think any sort of geographic. Well, 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 first of all, if you can't put a geographic limitation on it. No, but you could, you could put a, uh, you could let people know that that's our thinking. Well, okay, but, you know, this is going to, it's a multi-step process because whoever the bidder is, right. it's going to be, the, the, the transfer is going to be, uh, you know, up to his person, all right? That person, in all likelihood, is not going to be prepared at the point that that liquor license is issued to them to have a, to have a place for it. So, in all probability, you're going to issue it, with, and it's going to be effectively a pocket license till that person finds a place. And then they have to come back before the local ABC with you to approve the place. 
and I just don't, I'm not sure how you can do this. <clears throat> Isn't there something in the final process after we've identified the highest bidder that allows some wiggle room in that regard? Well, I mean, they're going to come before you, Mr. Daffis, and they're going to say, I now have a place on such and such a location, and I want to put the license there. I mean, the one that's uh, the, the last one we did was the was the CODA license, and that was originally located on Springfield Avenue. Right. Correct. Correct. So it, it started on Springfield Avenue, and then the it was, there was a a place to place transfer from Springfield Avenue to Coda. So you know, I, I don't think you can really control it. Except if if we're concerned about, so we have another liquor license. Let's look at it from a different perspective. If we have a we have a, this extra liquor license coming to town, but. Somebody were to try to put it in Maplewood Village. There's the existing zoning; it's permitted. Or do we try to tighten the zoning so that because if we get a, a fifth bar restaurant in Maplewood Village, that parking is is oh, it might not even get approved. Or, you know what I'm saying? Am I making any sense? No, I, no, no, I, I, no there's, I understand the practicalities of it. The, the problem you have is that you'd have to deal with that at the time that they're trying to place the license in a particular location. Because you're right, there may just not be. I mean, first, I, you know, frankly, I don't know where in Maplewood Village you could put it. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, as a practical matter. The new building won't be. So. Well, it might stay a pocket. No, I mean, I'm just saying. Right. No, you're right. I mean, you know, suppose the movie theater went out or the bank went out and somebody wanted to put a restaurant yeah, where the uh, where Bank of America is. Well, <laughs> a future township committee will have to deal with that. Right. Right. Just because we're, we're limited to what we can do. Yes. That's what you're saying. Yes. Okay. There is, uh, I don't want you to read it now, but there is something in... Uh, on page 34 of this, right at the end. which it says, uh, after we accept the bid, uh, after we determine that the person is going to be able to pay the bid price, that the blah blah, blah satisfy outcome of the investigation, of source criminal background check. Um, it is and then it says it is during this part of the process that a pro proposed location for the license, if any, is considered. Yes. But that doesn't mean that they have to be, because it could be that they're not going to have it at that time. Right. So in which case, it's not, you're not going to deal with the, with the location at that point. Right. But it says, once this entire process is complete, the municipal issuing authority must adopt a resolution, either issuing the license or denying the issuance of the license. So it seems to me that, I don't know, I guess, you, I guess I'm just trying to read into it and get well, it. Well, we denied a license for distribution license on Avenue, and that was upheld by the state, correct? Right. That's correct. <coughs> okay. So do we have that license? So, right yes. We have, a, we have a letter that says we can go ahead, right? Well, no, we're ready to go, yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, you know, Liz is... What, an option. what do we need to do? Do we need to pass a resolution well, instructing you to uh, begin this process? Well, the answer is yes, to, to go out for receipt of proposals, but, you know, we need some we need further instructions from the governing body as to what, what it is you want us to do. I mean, do you want a minimum bid and, and uh, you want us to put that in and, and, you know, there's additional information we really need. How, do we have a timeline that we have to? No. No. Well, the only thing is it does become a source of income. If we were to, I mean, it's not, it's I'm not, not really possible we, to do it before not this budget saying here. That. We, we won't be able to bring it in this year. I mean, you know, normally we put it, assuming you, you, you gave us some instructions on how you want us to proceed, we probably could put it out within the next 30 days. We have to advertise it twice, okay, then have sealed bids come back, and then have an opening. Uh, then the process is that the applicant has to go through the 12-page application process, et cetera, which is laid, laid out here. So maybe what Ms. Adams is saying is maybe we should go slower rather than faster so that we could sort of talk it up a little bit and see if we have people who are interested yeah. before i mean i will tell you that the last time my recollection <coughs> had only one bidder right 
we had only one bidder, and, and the bidder bid the minimum amount and, and was awarded that. What was the minimum amount last time? Was I believe it was five hundred thousand dollars. But was it a club? In other words, it was a sealed bid. Yes. Uh, and how long ago was this? This is for Coda. Years. Years. And I were talking about. She thought it was fourteen years yeah. ago. Oh, okay. fourteen years. Oh, Maplewood is so? hot now, and it's yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty hot at the time. Yeah. <laughs> And he tried to run the run it on Springfield Avenue, and it didn't wasn't successful. I, I, but I'm not sure that that was because of the it, it No, it, there was a oh, yeah, was that wasn't so it, it was yeah, it, it was changed. Yes. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. There was some creative it wasn't like right. It wouldn't succeed on Springfield Avenue. Yeah, right. It was because of a lot of nothing to do with that. Okay. So, all right. So let's we, we can we can do this. We can turn this around in 30 days, but we just need some. Direction so me. let's uh, let's sit on it for a bit and figure out how we could uh, kind of like put some feelers out there, let people know we're doing this, and generate a little interest. Okay. I have another question, Ms. Vestario, if we're not with the liquor license. Right. Okay. Ms. Vestario, a number of us have been uh, served in the lawsuit by former Captain Cummins. Will the township uh, be representing the individual members, or we all have similar counsel? The answer, the answer to your question is, you have been individually named, yes, as opposed to just members of the township committee. We, we, we it, the Ms. Adams, Mayor DeLuca, Deputy Mayor McGee, myself, and former committee woman Larry yes. are all named defendants in the lawsuit. The answer is, I believe that you will all be represented by one attorney. Okay, and that'll be the same attorney that represents the township. Yes. Okay. But I will check because <coughs> that is, I'll check with, uh, I'll check with, um, with the, uh, with the uh, Jeff attorneys. Okay, you know, I, I just want to make sure because you know we've now we now have been served, so I just want to make sure that someone's going to appear on our behalf. And that well, this is a this is an, thank you. Well, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. This is an amended complaint. Yes. This was the original order to show cause, which never got heard, and now he's put together some additional papers, et cetera, and served you with the amended complaint. I actually did send it to um, Mr. Nemeth, and he didn't get back to me, so I will follow up with him. Okay. I just want to make sure we don't have to all have Mr. Daffis uh, represent us. <laughs> well, that, that would be, be cool. What, what's funny about that, Mr. Daffis? What's that? I do, you, I'm sure you do a splendid job. A splendid job, indeed. Okay. Uh, anything else for Mr. Desiderio? I will let you know. Ms. Fritzen? No report. No report. Wait, I got some order. <laughs> Uh, okay, Township Commissioner Lindbergh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first off, I'd just like to uh, express my gratitude for this, this wonderful and generous community we live in that uh, after the horrible events last week down in Florida, uh, over the weekend raised nearly $31,000 uh, from almost 650 different donors in South Orange and Maplewood uh, to support every town for gun safety, uh, to help us to uh, to promote and advocate for uh, more sensible gun regulation in this country. Uh, the, uh, the leaders in South Orange, especially Village President Colm, along with uh, the members of this township committee, all publicly stepped up uh, in support of that. And it's, it's wonderful uh, how our neighbors uh, came together uh, for that important cause during this crucial time. Uh, I'd also like to uh, give some reports from the Public Safety Committee. Uh, it's already been advertised, but I want to mention it here again. We will be having a public forum to meet the two candidates to be the next Maplewood Police Chief. That will be on the evening of Monday, March 5th at the Woodland at 7.30 p.m. Um, the Public Safety Committee will also be meeting again, uh, hopefully for the final time, with uh, community groups including SOMA Action, SOMA Justice, and the Community Coalition on Race uh, to uh, further discuss the creation of the Citizens Police Advisory Board. We have a really good framework based on our previous meetings and discussions. We have a draft ordinance that we're reviewing from Mr. Desiderio. Uh, and I think we're really getting close on that so that in the next couple of months we'll have that uh, that committee put together and be ready to start appointing residents to that committee. 
Um, want to just mention that we're moving forward. The Maplewood Police Department is moving forward with the community in the restorative justice training. Uh, a number of, uh, of individuals were trained just this past weekend, and that will help us with diverting youth offenders away from the uh, traditional punitive criminal justice system to the restorative justice system. Uh, and the, the last thing that I would mention, though, I would yield if Mr. Mayor, do you plan to talk about the NV5 meeting Thursday night at DeHart? Okay. And then I have no further report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Adams. Well, now I have no report, Mayor. Mr. Davis. <laughs> Just a quick report, Mayor. I wanted to report that the uh, Maplewood Village Alliance has put together a new committee called the Parking Committee in an effort to uh, solve the parking crisis in the village, uh, a committee which I have uh, God help me agree to chair. Um, and so the idea here is to find solutions to the parking crisis, look at this issue uh, from all different angles, uh, structured parking, permanent parking solutions in terms of a garage or a lot, uh, using um, marketing and better underutilized existing parking, uh, and so on and so forth. We will, uh, I will certainly report back with specifics uh, as soon as we've identified uh, some real feasible options. Uh, we've only had one official meeting thus far. Uh, the committee is comprised of about eight or nine members uh, uh, and they're either property owners, merchants. We even have a uh, Garage, parking garage and parking lot uh, expert. Actually, he calls himself a mobility expert, and that is the theme of the committee to uh, provide mobility options uh, in the village and uh, across town. Thank you. I have one comment on that. I just would urge the committee to also look in most um, conversations right now in parking and parking garages in downtowns are starting to focus on um, the not too distant future of self-driving cars that of themselves would some of the problems associated because you could conceivably just be dropped off whether you're commuting or just going downtown your car goes back home and then you that's not that far away so um, structured parking is is being talked about as not as desirable anymore because it won't unless it's a, a adaptive, can be adapted to another use. Certainly part of the conversation, thank you. Yep. Okay, I have uh, five items quickly. Uh, this Thursday, the 22nd from 7.30 to 9, it will be at the DeHart Center, 120 Burnett Avenue. There'll be a public workshop on pedestrian safety, focusing primarily on Prospect Street and Burnett Avenue, but also looking at lighting on uh, Ridgewood and Wyoming, and um, some of the intersections on Valley. Uh, I would send the Township Committee uh, a link. I haven't really looked at this much. I just did a really quick uh, review of some of the information they found already. And it is just so rewarding to have an outside pair of eyes come in and look. Um, so I think this is going to be a really exciting project. Uh, and there will be certainly some budget implications for next year around traffic calming and maybe even some this year that we'll be able to implement. Um, on the 28th, I am going to uh, be going down to Washington as part of the delegation of mayors on the Railway River Tesk, uh, Railway River um, Mayors Group on the flooding. Uh, we're going to be meeting with um, our, our uh, not with Trump, with uh, Booker and Menendez and our congressional representatives, uh, Payne and Leonard Lance. Uh, I want to let you know that the RFPs for the Sustainable Energy, uh, sorry, Sustainable Essex Alliance, which is the energy aggregation, they have gone out. Uh, we're expecting um, some results pretty soon, right? Tomorrow. 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 Okay, that's pretty soon. Uh, there are six municipalities now that have signed on. They kind of go in a group. It's uh, Milburn, Maplewood, and South Orange, and then in the northern end, we have Glen Ridge, Montclair, and Verona. So with these six towns, we would be the fifth largest municipality in New Jersey, population-wise. So it's a pretty significant uh, alliance that we put together. 
Yeah, well, we'll actually, I, I did speak to uh, one of the councilmen up there who may, may get them coming. Uh, Mr. Desiderio, uh, at our code meeting, we talked about housing issues around borders and the state law that allows a senior citizen to bring in a border. Um, we we want to talk about a definition right now to make a border uh, a couple so that a senior could bring in uh, a couple. So we'll, we'll have a we'll hook up with you and have a sit down with you and go over that. So. And lastly, uh, there's still almost half the month left for, uh, well, I guess not half, but um, a few more days, almost a week plus, for Black History Month. And it's been really exciting this month all around town. It's just been incredible. And next week, uh, the 27th, there's something at the library, and the 28th, uh, there is, uh, well, this is at the library, the 27th I think is at the Woodland, but the 28th is going to be the Community Coalition on Race. They're going to have authors of uh, Tasting Freedom. So uh, it's a book on uh, uh, how they desegregated streetcars and voting rights in Philadelphia, in 19th century Philadelphia. So uh, it's really been a great month. I want to thank everybody for participating. and. Uh, with that, we get a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We'll see you on March 6th.